Shoulders done. Take it easy. Shoulders. I'm asking if they need the fucking ambulance right now. Wow, that was I just think I want it so bad, like I'll just go until my body won't anymore. We're in Pennsylvania, it's hot, it's humid, and it's gonna be a fight to the finish for sure. Round seven of the AMA IRC US Hard Enduro Series presented by Inside Enduro is a battle only for the toughest contenders. The hard thing here is gonna be the rocks. I mean, it's pretty much a never ending rock guard. It's really difficult because there's really no flow and it's just relentless. You have rocks and then holes and then rocks and then holes. The train out here definitely does not let up. As soon as you get out of one gnarly section, you might get like a minute break max. And you're right back into something else gnarly. We're kind of in like a coal mine and it's pretty much just rocks on top of rocks on top of rocks. It's rocks everywhere you look. The course is going to be brutal. There's typically no break. You just got to be on your game. Can't make any mistakes and not really any time to rest. I mean, it's tough to say where everyone's going to be. I mean, I just go out on Sunday and see where people are at. Everybody said it's like a six hour race, super physical, it's hot out here, it's humid. So, I don't know what, what I have to expect. You're going to want to quit, but you can't. To have a clean race here, you just got to kind of keep pushing. There are lots of people, even me, who want to get this podium. So I'm giving my best to beat the other guys and get this podium again. As one of the country's most challenging races, Tough Like Roar convincingly lives up to its name. It's not over until we, you get to that finish flag, whether three riders finish or 10 riders, it's irrelevant. You've just got to push on and try and get to the finish. I can push at the end and give my best the whole race and I, I would never quit the race. That's not, that's not going to happen. At this prestigious race, many will attempt, but few will succeed. With only three finishers the previous year, the odds are stacked against them. Got to be in good shape, got to be mentally strong, you got to want to keep going and just have that checker in your mind. You have to be skilled, but you also got to be super fit. So where you draw the line at that, it's hard to say. I know I can beat a lot of the guys here. I just got to put together a good race. With the series coming to a close, riders are putting it all out there to secure final points in the championship. Once the bike starts up, you crack that throttle. It's nothing but staying focused and looking at the end goal and trying to achieve that. Ryder LeBlond is more focused than ever on the top podium spot, with only two chances left to beat Tristan Hart this season. I'm going to be pretty disappointed if I don't get the win because I want to be the guy he wants to beat at the next one, so all there is to it. <laughs> I don't really care what anyone says or thinks, so that's one good thing about me. I can just shut everything out and go do my thing. For us to beat Tristan at this point, he's either got to screw up really bad or he just kind of checks out. Like he's, he's just so fast and consistent through all these sections that he just makes 30 seconds, another 30, another 30, another 30. But there's lots of factors and you know, anything can happen. The riders line up for a full day of qualifiers, seeing if they have what it takes to defeat the undefeated. And who is tough like Roar? Riders are lined up for the prologue based on sign-up time. 
replacing some of our fastest riders farther back in the second and third waves. Spencer Wilkie battles mid-pack, while Danny Lewis takes the whole shot. Ryder LeBlanc takes the inside line, and Keith Curtis pushes hard to move up. Tristan Hart takes the whole shot in wave three. Yeah, it's gonna be important to do well and get in that front row of 10 for the finals day. on the pack and moves into first place as Tim Apol picks a bad line. Spencer Wilton navigates the rock garden, but gets stuck in a hole near the end, costing him valuable time. 13-time trials champion Pat Smodgy and Tristan Hart are catching up. But I think the biggest thing here is just don't fall in the holes. You gotta take really cautious lines out there. Spencer takes the high line and gets tangled with an amateur rider. This gives Keith and Nick their opportunity to pass. Pat takes the inside line to pass Danny Lewis. Ryder LeBlanc is first to cross the line for the morning qualifier. Today's battle isn't over. The pro class lines up for the second qualifier on a new course with different terrain. These hot temperatures out here in Pennsylvania are gnarly. Like we're in a coal plant, it's black dirt, you got the sun beating down on you. It makes for some really hot temperatures. Spencer and Danny battle for the whole shot, but this time Spencer takes the lead. You know, battling with some of these guys and just being right in the field with the top podium guys feels good. I'm sure there's going to be some other guys that are come out of the woodworks that are used to this slippery East Coast terrain, this hot, humid weather. Spencer holds the lead with Danny close behind. Making up for a second wave start, Ryder is on a mission to pass the front runners. Danny takes the lead from Spencer. Ryder picks off his competitors one by one.
is in hot pursuit of Danny, attempting to pass. Danny gets stuck and Ryder finally makes the pass for first. I couldn't think it could be any. I was like, job, holy Woo! crap, he's riding good. The pro women line up for their first qualifier. Out the gate, the pro women battle hard for the top spot. Just want to get up front, ride a good, clean, strong race, and not spend too much time pushing. On their final lap, Shelby Turner leads the pro women through rocky obstacles crowded with amateurs. Shelby Turner is first to cross the line for the morning qualifier. With a little rest from the first race, the women line up again for the second qualifier. Stairway to Heaven. After a solid battle, Luis finishes second behind Shelby Turner. That one hurt a little more. That one did. That one was harder. Yeah, it was. Why was everybody saying it was easier? I know they were wrong. I was like, screw these guys. Are we riding a different course? This full day of qualifiers takes its toll on the riders, their bikes, and the mechanics who put all the pieces back together between races.
section as fast as possible. Get the speed sound. Yeah, that's really nice. A big thing to ride in hardened row is keeping your eyes up and not focusing on that front tire. It's going to be definitely important getting your tires in the right spot and just making sure that you can hit your lines and hit your marks. It's going to be hard, it's going to be fun, it's going to be different. Women and the rest of the riders are lined up and ready to go for the LCQ. They're taking 10 riders from this race. Things are about to get brutal. Let's go. Go get them. Go get them, Shelby. husband got a crowbar for a close by so she's gonna reef that thing back into place to get this thing back on the trail. <sighs> That's Louise Forsley working her way through bear shit. between a rock and a hard place, as they say. She'll use some skills and she'll get out of here. Morgan Pinky has regrouped after bending her brake pedal back into place. She looks good and she's moving right along. Shelby Turner takes first, followed by Louise Forsley and Morgan Tanky. These hard enduro ladies prove they are indeed tough like Roar.
day to go do some good old fashioned dirt bike racing. The riders are lined up and ready to go do battle. See what they got. German Tim Apol takes the whole shot. It's a hard enduro and not everything's gonna be going perfectly, so being mentally prepared that there are going to be issues and that there are going to be potentially catastrophic things that happen out there. This early in the race, riders capitalize on any mistakes in order to gain positions before the toughest sections. These early battles are fierce while the riders are still fresh. struggle, Tristan Hart moves efficiently through the rocks. Gas is boiling, tank is swelling up, dump some water on it, try to cool it down. Exactly what I need right now. Good. Roar is pretty much a never ending rock garden out there. Tristan Hart, currently in second, enters Stairway to Heaven behind the rider LeBlanc. The two riders are in a close battle through the rocks, but Tristan ultimately takes the lead. Okay, here comes our leader. Tristan comes into the pits after his first lap, with rider seconds behind. These guys are putting in a battle for the ages. They got their goggles off pushing their bodies to the absolute limit. Ryder 
Slaughter is in a close second at the start of the second lap. And he is on the move. Ryder looks so good on the bike. Super efficient, ready for action. Tristan Hart has won every race of the U.S. Hard Enduro Series that he has entered this year. And as the series goes on, the tension and the pressure keeps building and building, and Ryder keeps getting hungrier and hungrier and wants to win. Tristan's the man with everything to lose right now. Let's see how he does up Joe's garage. My strength as an athlete is probably my competitiveness. I don't like to lose, and it kind of carries into everything I do in life. everything to gain right now. He wants to win so bad you can see it in his heart. He's pushing his body past his limits. He's trying to catch Tristan desperately right now. So I'd say one well, of my strength is just not giving up. And I can push my body to that point and keep going past that point. You can see Tristan Hart came through this section just a little bit cleaner than Ryder, saving a little bit of energy and that adds up over a four hour time period. than others, but I know it's in my back pocket when I need to pull something off, maybe a line that other people don't see. So I just try to look for lines and do my best and see what I can do with the trial skills. I can do things not many people in the world can do on a dirt bike. on their second lap are pushing their bikes through new sections of course that are opened up after lap one with even more challenging obstacles. set their ego aside and they're focused on keeping their bodies cool so they can preserve and keep going to the end of the race. Yeah, Roar's always a physically demanding event, so at this point, not riding 100%, so it seemed to make more sense to team up over this ledge than to keep falling off and pushing. So wait for Tim to get in position and we'll uh, get his bike up and be on to the next. Typically no break, like you just gotta be on your game, can't make any mistakes and not really any time to rest. The rock and stuff here is totally different than anywhere else. The train out here definitely does not let up. Come on! How the fuck do they get up this way? Fuck. It's a Torx and a 13. Alright, thank you. To have a clean race here, you just gotta kinda keep pushing. I mean Sometimes you feel like you're gonna die here, and it's kind of normal because it's impossible to not sweat. The humidity is just too insane. So for the weekend, really just want to try to stay hydrated and try to survive. Mm -hmm. 
Every year we come here, the course just gets harder and harder and harder. So I think we're going to be in for a treat. The second lap is going to be relentless. So all we can hope for is just, just to get to the finish this year. Shoulder. Shoulder. Shoulder's done. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. All right. Despite a separated shoulder, Danny continues to push on. Here comes Tristan up stairway to heaven. You can use his technical riding ability to work his way right up the leg slope. Right near the finish, I had two really bad crashes back to back, and I was so close to the finish that if something would have happened to my body, I would have just pushed to the finish because that's just what you do. It didn't matter what it was going to be, I was getting up and I was going to finish that race out strong and hopefully for the win. The adrenaline was just so high that you just get back on the bike and you do it. Tristan Hart coming through here and he just keeps moving forward. As you can see, he's not mistake free. He's going over the bars, he's making mistakes, but he just keeps moving forward. And that's what separates him from the rest of the pack. The young rider LeBlanc has given Tristan Hart the robot a decent run for his money in the early parts of the race. Just an incredible rider through these rock sections. He's going to keep working his way through. Keep the pressure on that rear tire, looking good as ever. This rider gave Tristan a good run for his money early on in the race. He started to fade back toward the latter half. He's still pushing forward though. He wants to fight till the very end. Spinning, grinding, getting through it. The rest of our top five riders push to their limits as the five hour cutoff comes to a close. Not only to lock in their position, but also in hopes of earning the coveted roar finisher medal. Tristan Hart takes home the gold with a 42 minute lead ahead of the competition, earning his finisher medal and setting a high standard for what is tough like roar. After four hours, Ryder LeBlanc continues to push his body beyond limits for an impressive second place finish. Way to go, Ryder! Did you ride that fast the whole race or are you just trying to drop the media guy? <laughs> Securing second place, Ryder LeBlanc put it all out there, wanting the win more than ever in his home state. Good job, Pat! Yeehaw! Pat and Mozzie still having fun! This guy puts on an absolute clinic every time he shows up to one of these hard girls. So this race was probably the most physically demanding thing I've ever done, and mentally for that matter. And I used all the energy I had and I was glad to see the checkered flag, that's for sure. Shoot, me and Tristan have been talking about Pat a lot the last two weeks. We're like, man, this guy comes in and like starts training and focusing on this 100%, we're in trouble. Like, these trials guys, they just come out of nowhere sometimes and act like they don't know what they're doing and they end up smoking us at some point. They make us look bad, that's all it is to it. He does that every time he comes and rides a hard enduro, and we're surprised every time. That's the best part. We're in the wild! Man. Nice work, dude! You're the man! Keith Curtis rounds out a strong fourth place behind Sherco teammate Pat Smodgy. Only four riders finish this demanding course, proving that without a doubt, not everyone can be tough like Roar. We're in the wild.